At the end of the Ice Age, the landscape of Offaly was a veritable archipelago of lakes. The River Shannon, as we know it today, didn't exist as a river. Instead, it was just one long lake linked to a network of other lakes, large and small, right across the Midlands. And then, a couple of centuries, maybe a thousand years after the Ice Age, suddenly the level of the water in those lakes dropped everywhere. And we think this was not because the water managed to find an outlet somewhere, but rather because the land rose again. Because you must remember that for tens of thousands of years, uh, the crust had been depressed by the weight of all that glacial ice, at times perhaps as much as two kilometers thick. And when that was lifted off, uh, the land was able to, to rise back up again. Right across Offaly and in certain other parts of the Midlands, we have a remarkable record of that drop in lake level in the form of extraordinary limestone boulders that actually record for us the boundaries of that vanished lake system. This one here is at Cran Cree, which is between Burr and Cullen. Uh, and you can see these curved surfaces here are caused by the lapping action of waves breaking against the shoreline of the vanished lake. And you can see that there are two of them, because we think that the drop occurred in two stages. There were originally several prominent wave-washed boulders here at Cran Cree, but this is the only one remaining. The others were broken up with explosives, and you can still see the charge holes for the explosives in places. Smaller boulders, the summits of which were just below the level of the water, have a characteristic cusp profile created by the to and fro lapping action of waves breaking at the edge of the lake. In the millennia during which the water table was several metres higher than it is today, water was sometimes impounded towards the headwaters of some of the streams flowing off the moraine. What happened here, for instance? Uh, this is the Mill Park stream which forms the boundary between Offaly and North Tipperary near Mount St. Joseph. And after the Ice Age, this was a flat marsh in which tufa accumulated to a depth of several metres until uh, an end was put to it by the drop in the water table recorded for us by the mushroom stones. Now tufa is, uh, it's a young limestone. What happens is that water which is saturated in lime gives up some of that lime which precipitates, and in the process it entombs plants and other debris, uh, including uh, the shells of whatever shelly animals were living in the marsh at the time. And in fact, uh, this mill park tufa here contains the richest fauna ever recorded for the Irish quaternary. Uh, the quaternary is a geological term for the period of the Ice Age and afterwards down to present time. The richest fauna uh, something like 50 different species of land snails and a dozen species of osteopods, which are other small shelly animals, have been found in this stuff, including uh, a species never recorded elsewhere in Ireland uh, and other species that are extremely rare today. The lower half of the deposit is dominated by freshwater species indicative of a fairly large body of water, a medium-sized, slow-moving stream with plenty of vegetation. In the upper half, this is replaced by mainly terrestrial and swamp species, with a brief return to more aquatic conditions at the very top. Tufa formation began here around 7,000 years ago and continued for several thousand years until the stream came to occupy its present-day more defined course, possibly as a result of the uplift that is recorded in the mushroom stones and began to incise the subfossil deposit. As a result of that drop in lake level, which isolated the lake 
age marker stones, the mushroom stones. Uh, extensive areas of marshy fen developed right across the county. And these became the templates on which the raised bogs began to develop. Now bogs, of course, are made up of peat, uh, the remains of plants growing on the bog, uh, only partly decomposed because of the acidic nature of the peat. And since 1946, Bordnemona has been exploiting this peat reserve for the manufacture of briquettes and for generating electricity. But peat is not the only geological resource of the bogs. There's also this. This is ochre. Ochre is a very rich ore of iron and in fact it was exploited extensively in early Ireland for the manufacture of iron tools and more extensively still in the late part of the 19th century when it was exported, uh, particularly from the bogs around Erigrina and Ballybeg in North Offaly. This is a part of Ballybeg bog, it's a part of the bog from which Bordnemona has already harvested the peat. This building showcases another geological product that is a legacy from the end of the Ice Age, because this yellow brick that is so characteristic of Offaly's traditional architecture was made from clay that was laid down in the deeper water of the lakes, in the shallower water of which the sands and gravels of the eskers were laid down. These brick clays, too, were extensively exploited, especially in the 19th century, and, like the ochre, they were exported to Dublin in large numbers along the canal.